I definitely got to say that for the most part, this episode took the content from the manga. And a lot of these chapters, nobody was really happy with. A lot of the things that was going down felt very confusing. Nobody could really understand certain aspects of it. And it was just like a mess. But the anime took that content, things that just felt unclear, things that just felt bad in general, and made things make a lot more sense, flow better, gave emotion to it, and overall, it just did a great job with this content. I mean, the anime, for the past couple weeks, it hasn't been the most exciting or anything, but it's been handling some content that's been a little iffy, and this week, it just took all that and made something a hell of a lot better than what it was in the manga, and I'm just like, Periot, I'm giving you props for this one, bro. Let's go. Now, for starters, to see once again Naruto and Sasuke truly working as a team, having the combo of the QB with the Susan all around it, similar to how Madara did it in the past. Not only was that epic, but that also shows that the new generation, because if you look at the old one, it kind of looked a little bit weaker. Maybe the QB wasn't as strong as well, because, you know, it just has all that fucking incredible chakra mixed in with Naruto. And the combo that Naruto and Sasuke did, it just looks incredible. So, it kind of showing a little bit that the newer generation can do it, but do it even better than what the previous generation could do and also just showing that Naruto and Sasuke whatever may happen later on down the road as of right now they can work as a team and this is kind of giving us a little bit of well I guess half of team seven working together again because I mean at the end of the day let's keep it real when in the past has soccer really been a huge beneficial part of team seven in part one I mean in all the fights that they had for the most part she really couldn't do nothing anyway because in part one she was really fucking weak so it was Naruto and Sasuke to begin with and Kakashi doing things on the side right now he's injured and kind of seeing things through Obito's eye so he can't really do nothing so in a sense it is the same thing yet again team seven soccer in the back with big titty Tsunade and Kakashi she's just chilling out. The beginning of this episode did feel a little bit slow and there was a lot of times where we were just looking at the characters and they were just like slowly panning so it wasn't the greatest pace in the beginning of this episode but as it progressed it really just took again a lot of content and did something special with it. For starters one of the things that I was complaining about in the manga and it just felt like what the fuck is going on was when everybody had those giant energy Rasengan fucking chakra balls and I was like when the fuck could Rock Lee do Rasengan? But it all just seemed so much clearer in the anime that they were already there. And they were basically just pushing it along. And to have a little bit more of, uh, I guess, a visual demonstration and kind of seeing it in movement. Everything just made so much more sense. And basically, it was really all Naruto's doing. But he's having his friends do all the work because he can't do everything. He can't do every single thing. So he has to spread out the work. Like, okay, I can't push these things. Can you guys please do that for me while I do something else? And at the same time, it's giving everyone a moment, even if it's just a small moment, because at the end of the day, let's be real, it's not like, first of all, we have that many villains here, and how much can they really do against these beasts, so to have, like, even Ten Ten have a little moment in this episode, yes, Ten Ten had a moment, that is fucking awesome, I'm glad everyone got their moment, and just, again, it just seems so much clearer in the anime, I'm not, like, annoyed, I'm not, like, wow, this just seems like horseshit, how the fuck is everyone doing Rasengan, it was already there, it just seemed so much clearer, I was like, Yes. Seeing the flashback with all the tail beasts and kind of, once again, when Naruto met them or whatever, it was alright. Nothing too spectacular, but it kind of explained a little bit more why he could do tug of war with certain ones. And it's like, why wasn't the one tails there? I still don't get it. It's just that he's too out of control. Like, that's one thing that had me, like, wondering... Where the fuck was the one tails and all this? Was it still inside of Obito or what's going on? And even giving Gara and B their own moment. Gara getting the one tails, B getting the eight tails so they could do the tug of war. It was like everyone had a little time to shine. Even Sakura, even though she's just there like meditating pose position with Tsunade or whatever, doing their little healing dance, but they were doing something too. And honestly, some of the bits again that in the manga I was like really with some of these dream sequence things or whatever well it felt like dream sequence and honestly a lot of us were like what the fuck happened how the fuck did naruto get into obito's mind but in the anime it was explained a little bit better and kind of made a little more sense that basically everyone's chakra and everyone's mind state right now is all fucking connected because they're all doing the tug of war you have the ten tails and all the chakra from obito mixed in and that's how naruto was able to see his past and kind of what his feelings are at the moment obito really just thinking like i fucked up and you can definitely see that at, at this point obito is just just like, I'm going to keep fighting till the end because I already started this. But he is just filled with regret at this point. The fact that he is visualizing and wishing that he was on the other side and that he was a part of this and he eventually became Hokage and everything. You could definitely see that 
this is ultimately what he really feels and he's just filled with regret at this point. I think the further he went with his power and the further he got closer to his goal, ultimately, the more he was filled with regret. And when Naruto actually stood there with all the Shinobi Alliance and was like talking to him, it's because basically all their chakra was mixed together. It wasn't because like he used Genjutsu or just some BS. It makes a lot more sense now. And I'm like, thank you. Thank you so much. Because in the manga, it was just like, what the fuck? Did Naruto become some fucking Jesus God all of a sudden that he could just penetrate people's minds? Oh, the chakra mixture. I get it. And with all that being said, I gotta say, very good episode for what they had to deal with and kind of clearing everything up. I give them props. I'm giving this one 8 out of 10. The animation wasn't the best for certain parts, but it did look decent, especially when you have all of the Konoha 11 moving the chakra balls and everything. And then you also have the tug of war going on, me not so helping. It was like, it looked all right for the most part, the art and animation. It wasn't as bad as some of the previous weeks, except though that last shot with Naruto when he was like pointing the finger, his face looked a little off. So I guess it wasn't terrible it could have been better but ultimately it was still fine and i guess like i'm just really happy again that they did things better than the manga and the fact that we pretty much already have progressed to the point of almost the finale of the fight with obito that's impressive they are going through a lot of content very quickly so i don't think the naruto anime is going to really go that much longer once the manga ends next week i honestly wouldn't be surprised if we have maybe I want to say four, maybe five months left of the anime because, I mean, the way we're going through this is like probably next week or the week after that, we will be done with this fight with Obito. So, yeah, we're going by very quick. And your overall thoughts of the episode, I felt it. I'm not even going to lie. I honestly really did feel like, you know, this guy fucked up. We all fuck up. Sometimes, you know, you take it way too far. He took it way too far on a whole other level, but ultimately he did. It was a little creepy when he was kissing the Rin picture. I was like, bro, that's obsession. That's not a <laughs> crush. That's a little bit too far, but you, I get it. And I think a lot of the misplaced hatred towards Obito was ultimately because of the way he was portrayed. I think perception is a big play in why people just had this thing against Obito. And not that I'm saying he's a great villain or anything, but the anime is portraying him so much better and kind of just giving this like, oh my god, I just feel bad for him. Like, yes, he's an asshole. Yes, he fucked up, but I feel bad because this is what he truly wanted. The real Obito, the little fucking kid that wanted to be Hokage, this is what he wanted. He wanted to be there with the people and... Fuck. And your overall thoughts of this episode, again, I really enjoyed it, and I'm glad that the anime is taking steps to make sure that it's not as confusing as the manga and makes sense. But that's all I have for this review. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you liked anything I had to say or enjoyed the video, drop me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, if you could do so as well, that'd be awesome. I'm Fanet World, and as always, people, have an awesome day.